Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Global Solidarity Actions Held on 34th Anniversary of Constitutional Referendum in Haiti. Trial of former policemen charged with the murder of George Floyd begins in the US. Protests against UK policing bill continue amid increasing repression. Palestinians reaffirm their right to their land on the 45th annual land day. And in our video section, we take a look at the countrywide shutdown in India in solidarity with the ongoing farmers' protests. In our first story, the International Day of Solidarity with Haiti was observed on March 29th. The day also marked the 34th anniversary of the referendum adopting the Haitian constitution in 1987. The constitution was a result of the democratic movement in 1986. The popular uprising ended the 29-year-old dictatorship of the Duvalier family. Thousands of people took to the streets on Monday amid continuing protests against the illegitimate regime of Jovenel Moise. People have also re uh, rejected his attempts to replace the current constitution with a new one. It will reportedly contain provisions for return to the presidential form of government. Several demonstrations were held in the capital Port-au-Prince for the second consecutive day. Protesters also condemned the continuing international support for his regime. The UN, the US and the OAS have backed the president's claim that his term will end next year. This is despite repeated declarations by the Haitian people that they do not recognize him as president. They have stated that Moisa has violated the country's constitution and that his term ended on February 7th. Several demonstrations and other actions were held in solidarity with Haiti. People also gathered outside US embassies and UN and OAS offices to demand the self-determination of the Haitian people be respected. Solidarity actions were held in Argentina, Venezuela, Zambia, Chile and the US among other countries. For our next story, we go to the United States where the trial of a former policeman charged with the murder of George Floyd began on March 29th. Derek Chauvin was filmed kneeling on the neck of 46-year-old Floyd for nearly nine minutes in May 2020. He and three other officers were trying to arrest Floyd for supposedly trying to use a counterfeit $20 bill. Chauvin continued to kneel on Floyd's neck despite him repeating that he was unable to breathe. All four officers were fired from the Minneapolis City Police Department the day after his murder. Chauvin is facing charges of second and third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. He has pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Prosecutor Jerry Blackwell stated on Monday that Chauvin had used excessive and unreasonable force. He stated that Floyd had stated 27 times that he could not breathe. The court also heard testimonies of three witnesses called by the prosecution. Chauvin's defense team claimed that he had not only followed his police training, stating that the use of force had been, to quote him, unattractive but necessary. They've also tried to argue that Floyd died of an overdose. However, an autopsy by the county medical examiner stated that Floyd had died of cardiopulmonary arrest. The report ruled his death a homicide caused by neck compression during police restraint. As reported by the New York Times, the prosecution will argue that Floyd died of asphyxia. The trial could potentially extend up to a month as hundreds of witnesses are expected to testify. The three other police officers present during Floyd's murder will go on trial separately later this year. In our next story, we go to the UK where protests against the widely denounced policing bill continued over the weekend. People led a protest march to the city centre in Manchester on March 27th. Later in the day, protesters also held a demonstration on the tram line in St. Peter's Square. Police officers were then seen forcefully removing and arresting protesters from the track. 18 people were arrested, with the youngest being 17 years old. As reported by Manchester Evening News, six people have been released under investigation. Other protesters have been given cautions and fixed penalty notices. Protests were also held in other towns and cities, including Bath, Nottingham and Sheffield. Hundreds of protesters had also gathered outside the police headquarters in the city of Brighton. Thousands have been protesting to demand the repeal of the police, crime, sentencing and courts bill. It will grant police wide-ranging discretionary powers to crack down on protests. This includes setting limits on the duration of protests and setting noise limits. Saturday's protests were held a day after heavy police repression of protests in Bristol. Over a thousand people had gathered in the city centre on Friday for the third night of protests. Hundreds also staged a sit-in near the police station where riot police had been deployed. Later in the night, protesters were attacked with batons and shields and there were also reports of pepper spray being used. Police were also seen using dogs to threaten and disperse the protesters. Ten people were arrested on Friday night. Two protests are scheduled to be held in Bristol this week. A National Day of Action will also be held over the weekend. And now we go to Palestine where March 30th marked the 45th annual Land Day or the Yom Al-Ard for the Palestinian people. The day signifies the recognition of their ownership over their lands and the right of Palestinian refugees to return to their homeland. Six Palestinians were killed and over a hundred were injured by Israeli forces on this day in 1976. The violence occurred in a demonstration against Israel's plan to seize 2,100 hectares of Palestinian land. The day is commemorated by holding vigils and planting olive trees as a sign of collective resistance. People also visit the graves of all those who were killed during the demonstration. News agency Wafa reported that a few marches held on Tuesday morning were also disrupted by Israeli forces. Israel reportedly expropriated over 85% of historical Palestinian land. Moreover, only 6.8 million of the 13.7 million Palestinians actually live on their land now. 
the rest are forced to live abroad as refugees because of the denial of their right to return by Israel. These findings were part of a statement released by the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics. At least 219 Palestinian villages have been impacted by the construction of illegal apartheid walls and Israeli settlements. By the end of 2019, Israel had constructed at least 316 illegal settlements and outposts in the occupied West Bank alone. Hundreds of Palestinians were also killed by Israeli forces during the Great March of Return protests in 2018 and 19. According to a new UN report, the demolition of Palestinian homes was increased by a record 65% in 2021. For our final story, we go to India which recently marked four months of the ongoing farmer struggle. While the government has refused to agree on the demands of the farmers, the protests have continued at the borders of Delhi. A countrywide shutdown in solidarity with the struggle was held on March 26th. Farmers blocked national and state highways and held sit-in protests on train tracks. Here is a video feature on the shutdown. आज 26 तारीख को किसान आंदोलन के चार महीने होने व मोदी सरकार की हटधर्मिता और तानाशाही के खिलाफ पूर्ण तौर पर भारत बंद का जो आवाहन किया गया था उसे कामयाब करते हुए पूरा बाजार और चक्का जाम किया गया है ये जो आज का बंद है इस बंद का असर मध्य प्रदेश में अलग अलग जगह पर अलग अलग तरह से है अगर आप नॉर्दर्न मध्य प्रदेश को देखेंगे जिसमें ग्वालियर है भिंड है मुरैना है गुना है ये वाला जो एरिया है इस एरिया में लगभग कंप्लीट जो है कि बंद है बंद को बड़ा सम, आ, जो है कि समर्थन मिला है जगह जगह जत्थे निकले और आम जनता ने भी जो है इस आंदोलन को समर्थन किया इस देश के लोकतंत्र को बचाने का आह्वान है इस देश की धर्म निरपेक्षता को बचाने का आंदोलन है देश के आवाम को बचाने का आंदोलन है क्योंकि मोदी सरकार जिस तरीके के कानून ला रही है उससे आने वाले समय में ना मजदूर बचेगा ना किसान बचेगा ना आम आवाम बचेगा इसलिए ये लड़ाई आज पूरे देश के आवाम की है और हम यही गुजारिश करते हैं आज के इस बंद के दौरान कि आम जनता इस बंद के समर्थन में भरपूर सहयोग करे ताकि इस देश के लोकतंत्र को बचाया जा सके इस देश की धर्म निरपेक्षता को बचाया जा सके और आने वाला जो भविष्य है नौजवानों का उन नौजवानों के भविष्य को सुरक्षित किया जा सके इन सारे मुद्दों को लेकर आज ये बंद है हम सी की ओर से भी इस बंद का पूरा समर्थन करें भारत बंद के तहत केवल यही संदेश किसान देना चाहते हैं कि जब तक ये काले कानून वापस नहीं होंगे ये काले कानून रद्द नहीं होंगे किसान पीछे हटने वाले नहीं है चाहे ये एक दिन का बंद हो चाहे ये दस दिन का बंद हो जाए किसान इस लड़ाई को लड़ेगा और जीत के रहेगा That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.